Hi, this is me, and this is um, Thursday the 18th. My Kohl's cash was expiring. Um, I was going to buy some something for someone last time. I only had like the $5, and I had it in my cart. And I was going to ask them. Yeah. It expired. I ended up buying the item. Again, without the coupon. which And I ended up not shopping at Kohl's. Because my coupon expired, I got mad. My $5 coupon, and today I just saw a commercial and whatever targeted commercial, and I'm like, sucker, go to Kohl's, like, your Kohl's cash is expiring today, um, and I started lo logged in, sometimes they, I swear they used to send you emails, like, your Kohl's cash, you have three days to use this, and I swore they sent you coupons, like, by the cost, everyone used to send you coupons and reminders, and there'd be a big banner that would be, like, used by today. So now they're kind of like, whatever, we don't want them to use it, although it's an incentive to get your foot in the door. Spend some money. So I still end up spending $16 taxes, like, one between $1 and $2 per three items, and $9 shipping when I know... The shipping is going to be less than five. I mean, for a personal person, it'll be like five dollars or less. For a company, they get like half off. They're probably paying two dollars and twenty cents shipping. As a business owner, I charge shipping for my eBay store. I have the materials and stuff. I don't charge extra for the materials or the time, although you should. I think they used to have handling. I might have had one object or one item with handling on it. Um, I did buy a CB radio, and speaking of eBay, and a book for my son. Um, it didn't have any of the inner pages, which I'm disappointed about. I could have, it's a pretty popular book. Oh my gosh, I'm like, what if I already have this book at home? I might already have it. Oh, shoot. Anyways, um, I feel like we had it on the shelf already. Whatever. I had some book about Michigan. Anyways, whatever it is, I didn't read it. I always have good intention about my educational, personal education. You have so much to do for everything else. That has to be accredited and approved for your program. So you can read 10,000 pages on the subject matter and become an expert. Actually, in some states, it does count as um, for certain certifications. I didn't think about certification. So I was on a no spend last year and it didn't go well. It didn't go along well. Um, I paid my credit card off. I kept paying it off every day with savings and it's every day it's like $169 more paid off. I was paying up $400. Like what? I'm not frivolously going out and buying diamonds and going to rent cars and going on vacation it is car insurance it is the utilities at the other place the utilities here probably phone bill gas to get to work gas to get to work gas to get to work underwear um, I got fat I've been doing these you know soaps and you know cleanse and my weight had going up to 175 and it was steady and then it went down to 171 and then it went back up to now to 178 which I had been that way in like 2007 or something I had gone up in weight and gone down so I think I had gone down maybe 2010 I don't know To say like 10 years, I kept that weight off, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 97 pounds off, and it's skyrocketing up, unbelievable, I've been in this town for a few months walking, trying to keep the car parked, just walk as many places as I can, I leisurely walk or to walk to the post office or to my one of my appointments is right around the corner it's not a lot of steps but you feel like it should add up 
to not have to get in a car. I almost feel like I, it'd be better to go to Walmart once a week just to walk around and see what's on sale. Like, not, like just to, you think getting in a car, walking from the parking lot to the store and then walking around the store, that's a lot of steps. That's more than going to the post office. But if you could combine and go around the neighborhoods and stuff, it is unreal. I, we were doing, um, I like the other, I think the other walk at the old place was way better because it was a loop that you pretty much, if there's cars coming like at five o'clock, it kind of sucked because there's no sidewalk and it was almost like a one lane so you would get over in like the, the gravel and wait for cars to go by because sometimes they're zooming by and you don't think they care. You have to be careful. Anyone young and old could trip or stumble or fall and if someone's going like this expecting you to jump out of the way and you fall or drop something and you've been down and it, you know people do that around here lately um, they've been running into kids and stuff and running over kids on bikes and just going yelling at the pedestrian or the biker and just it's usually older um, or middle-aged white women just hit and run and, and not even like it's bad enough seeing people drive down the street like this without their hands or eyes, hands on the steering wheel and eyes on that road. And it, it's bad enough if someone hit somebody and didn't notice that, like, they shouldn't be doing that. But it's like they notice, they acknowledge, they stop, and they take off. And people have been up on the Facebook groups looking for uh, witnesses and seeing these kids are on their way to school. You, you think, oh, it's school, my kid's going to the right place, and knows the rules of the road, and you expect people around the school to be conscious of people around the school, <laughs> busyness, um, so I hate this lifestyle of everybody speeding along, um, I'm super stressed out about going to one job, then the next, and the next, and then having your bills, a little bit of food. Nobody's forcing me to wear underwear. Nobody's forcing me to wear a bra. Nobody's forcing me to buy laundry soap and wash it in the bathtub. I feel like in order to maintain any type of employment, you should probably wash your hair with shampoo and wear deodorant and I just bought three things of deodorant on Vitacost they were ten dollars each and that's like the cheapest place to buy stuff I look this was Schmidt and I have like underarm um, stain see this all dark um, just dark stain I had washed my underarm with a wipe the other day and this one kept coming out pink and I was like that blood I was all scared and I was like did I wear a red sweater that transferred dye onto my skin and why is it this side and not the other and then I thought that this hyper pigmentation would disappear that it maybe was from something else so I'm disappointed that I just bought three things of deodorant that might have been causing discoloration and I'm like ah. The rose, was it rose vanilla or something? The pink one, there's two pink ones, I think, question it. Um, let's look, guys, let's, I don't know how to screen share here. Um, let's look at, hmm, I was like, ooh, distraction, ooh, distraction. I sent something, UPS to my kids, ground, and last time I sent something, it was over ninety dollars. They quoted sixty, and it rang up. Nine, I think it might have gone up to hundred or something. They charged ten dollars to pick out, which I didn't realize was a price. Um, it doesn't say where it is. Oh, it's only it's the they took it the wrong way. It's in Laurel. I think it's in Delaware. They didn't even st I shipped that on Monday. It's Thursday. It's not even left. Oh, they've gone farther away from Oregon. Or, yeah. Oh, come on. Okay. 
<laughs> we forgot what I was looking up. Okay, so S C H M I. Okay, his Smith's children. I was gonna just type it in. When you look up the website, it takes you to a. So it has Smith's.com. Smith's natural deodorant and soaps are aromatic and free of chemicals like aluminum and SLS. We have a variety of natural deodorants, toothpaste, and soaps. Um, I do have a pit powder, which I forgot. Oh, it, the website works now. I swear, you guys, it didn't work last time. It said this was up for sale. Maybe I spelled it wrong. Maybe I got it to work, so it's $9.99. It's like $9.50 at um, By the cost. Pit powder, I forgot to order that. And then I got this lavender something, which doesn't have ingredients in it. I think it says corn free. So I don't know about baking soda. Everyone is using like. Are they using. What is that ingredient on the pit powder? Um. I wanted to say a loom, but I'm like, that's what you use when you cook. That actually, I should. The stuff that I use for my cosmetics is. Someone didn't want to use food as medicine. They thought that was like the most disgusting thing, but it's like, if you're going to put something on or in your body, why not have something that's safe for being edible? So there's. Muddy water, pit powder, um, I can't remember the name of it. Arrowroot powder, I was thinking. So the first ingredient is baking soda, the second is arrowroot powder. Calcium. Mont Morillonite clay. Fenugreek seed powder, grapefruit oil, lavender oil, geranium oil, tea tree oil, patchouli oil, ling ling oil, and then a lot of ingredients say organic so we had to be careful if um that baking soda I don't know. I thought it was using something oh I didn't want anything with cornstarch in it I have a corn allergy um this is just crazy so what I don't like is being a human um being so busy in the fall winter spring I feel like we should be like, like, okay, I was trying to explain this on another video. Going into life with our winter year, year and your seasons with seeing the harvest season, I had the instinct to try to gather as much as I could right now, and not because of Christmas or Thanksgiving or birthdays or whatever just like I felt like a squirrel like I had to run around and I was around the squirrels running around getting these acorns and I see birds fighting stuff to get nesting materials out it's warming materials maybe I don't understand the migration patterns very well out here but instinctual inside I felt like I need to gather this some dry fruit I had already got this but I was gonna ask what you guys thought about that's fact that this costs so much. <coughs> warm clothes, warm socks. Um, I had bought socks and then my toenails were rubbing off. I have, um, these are not all wool. If you look at them, you're like, oh, that'd be nice wool. Everything is now acrylic and polyester with a little bit of wool. Um, I did even, it got really cold a few days ago, pulled out. I have one set of long johns. He had somebody's some woman's long john shirt that goes up to my chest. I've been wearing it, but you wear that under something and the wind's going through and it's like really baggy and it's like long sleeve. I'm like, this is awkward. You know what I ought to do is sew some of that spandex stuff onto it. I ought to sew it underneath and make that kind of like a baby doll. 
Because <laughs> I feel like the spandex cover your abdomen and your hips would keep that wind from going out. I might be on to something, guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back to you on that. Because I'll wear that out of desperation. It's cold, I don't have any underclothes. But it's really uncomfortable. Um, I don't know what's up. It's almost like something you get super cheap and you wash it and it shrinks, and stretches. And Normal people would throw that crap in the trash. I keep thinking I hear I got some leggings, another pair of leggings, clearance. Oh, these ugly ones that look like bleach stains. And then I got my daughter something and I got um, I think it's pumpkins I actually got a matching shirt today an extra large I was gonna start shrinking stuff down to large but I'm almost 180 last year at this time I had gone down to 161 and I was looking forward to being in the 50s again and now I'm looking at going through the 80s and the 90s like I feel like I'm gonna pass the weight um, people are like, you need it. research how to lose weight, and what's hard is I lost over uh, pretty much exactly 100 pounds. I was in a weight loss group that felt like a eating disorder, and I think it also screwed up my metabolism even more. And I feel like every time I had to lose weight, I had to take something out of my diet and change something. Um, Say for two years you eat two salads a day, a bowl of frozen fruit for snack, and a Lara bar before dinner. And drink so many glasses of water and so many cups of tea. And your weight goes down. And then all of a sudden it shoots up. Like it steadily goes down. And then like in six months, like, you gained all that weight back and more. And people are like, you don't know what you're doing, blah, 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 blah. It's like, what worked before didn't work now. The exercise, you increased the exercise. You did more, like, calisthenic, like, just at home, no gym stuff. I uh, started lifting the water bottles, doing the physical therapy stuff. Cut down on any fatty nuts. Cut down on any, on using a lot of oils. If you drizzle salad with oil, you just use a little bit, cut down sodium down, and it just, or for me, maybe it's just added sodium that's causing it to go up, um, but it's, now it's getting to be fighting words, um, I started a few, a couple, like two weeks ago, they had gone down to 171, so I was looking forward to seeing the 160s again. And now it's been at 178. Early morning, not having drink anything, used to bathroom. I used to see a steady change when uh, adequate toilet usage. It's almost like there's a curse on me. Um, speaking of curses, I have, again, since the negativity of my dad's negativity and toxicity in the cosmos, I have since had a dream about going to a store, and it was like a health food store, and like I say now, I go to a health food store and there's not health food. At first, I'd go to a health food store to eat anything they have, lose weight, lose weight, lose weight. I'd go and get... Um, to Safeway and get um, rotisserie chicken, lose weight, lose weight, lose weight. Now, I eat salad and gain three pounds, like overnight. And I'm not talking. I'm talking vegetables and like two cherry or two grape tomatoes, and maybe a carrot or two, if even that. Just leafy greens, a little bit of olive oil, maybe a teaspoon of nut butter, maybe, maybe some sunflower, pumpkin seeds. To get a little protein and a little salt, maybe some turmeric. Um, I used to do where I'm going the brag, um, the brag products. I I ought to cut those out. People cut out salt, don't cut out salt. 
Like, I ought to cut that out because I don't know the um, processing, um, cutting out raw foods, and I had found things that were processed were causing me to gain. Um, so I'm going to have to cut out the almonds and cut out the um, brag, except for the cider vinegar. And um, I have some sea kelp, so I might have to just transition to using up my um, Redmond Rail Salt and the kelp and that's the only thing I could think of um, the raw honey even maybe I try to cut out I don't like uh, to eat raw agave with my tea and muffins uh, and I love chocolates yeah but I don't do chocolate I liked it with that but it truly was vegan the store on my leg just turned white. Oh, I got home yesterday after being in class. So we were like an hour, it was an hour, 20 minutes, hour and a half from our headquarters. So it was like a two hour drive there, a two hour drive home, and like an eight hour class. I came home, was so sore and uncomfortable. I like, fell asleep with Duolingo in my hand. Like, oh, I finished my lesson. Oh. And cranky, I had. I have a signing today. I have work and I have to leave for work in about an hour. And I have to be there at 6. It's almost 8.30. And then I have a signing at 7. That's only paying $60. If you mess up anything, they're only going to pay you. They're going to pay you $15 less. Why the heck did I? $60 for general notary signing would be... Um, $30, where I'm going $30 for the drive, just for the drive, it'd be more than $30 just for the drive, it'd be like $35, and that not including the print cost, and they don't tell you, they, I say, how many pages are they, I say, 35 pages, 33 pages, they got 33 pages of instructions that I printed, I wish I could show you, it's not in here, they have 45 pages of documents, and they want you to have the signer sign both sets of documents. And they want a third copy, even though the client supposedly has their own copy. So they say 33 pages, and now I have this checklist and list of instructions that I printed so I could take to their house. And I have, so I have about 200, uh, two sets of instructions. The email and that, I have 200 pages. I saw him that's over 30 miles away. I'm a sucker. Normally, I would, it, it was a loan modification, and I don't, I've never done one, but I wasn't expecting that. Hi, I'm back. So I had, well, checked to see if my partner was home just because I'm embarrassed talking, and I get really twitchy. When I make videos, I like public speaking. I get twitchy, like play with my hair and stuff. Um, there's a doctor on um, YouTube that had a video about hair pulling and skin picking and OCD and stuff. And I was like, why is this in my feed? <laughs> I better, it's seven minutes. I better watch it. Um, I was. I was really happy to be out of my hospital as a kid, and I was doing public speaking, um, just a speech class, and I took another speech class, and I, I really like speaking in front of a crowd. Um, in medical school, there's a lot of racism. You would go speak for your... Um, you knew when you were a student looking around, most people weren't, doing, weren't paying attention to the teacher. You might have been listening, but they weren't just, like, engaged and answering questions and raising their hand and nodding that you, you know you seeing them you're not just on Facebook and I mean as the years went on some of those classes towards the end they had so much homework that you had to be like trying to throw something together a little bit here and there <laughs> like uh, grand rounds I would take notes at every grand rounds every single grand rounds so I paid attention there's a attendance space there's no homework uh, you heard some good nuggets of primary practice, like care of doing your 
billing, stuff like that, and as well as regular grand round cases and medical conditions, um, treatment plans and all that. I remember one class, me and my friend put together like cartoon and music and started like, we were both left in and we were both African American. She was from Africa. We were just like, boom, 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 boom. We both had two kids. Oh, she had three kids. And I thought it was like live. Everyone was just like still like looking down at their phone or their computer. Once in a while we get a glance. I was like, man, it would suck to be a teacher in higher education because ain't nobody paying you any attention. And no matter how much you engage, I remember some of the class, they all laughed when this group made fun of um, African American names like Tunisia and, you know, Joaquim or whatever. Like, they just like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, trying to do this ghetto skit, like literally. And they, people were rolling on the floor laughing. And I was like, this is culturally insensitive. And sometimes I wish I'd go back in time and be like, teacher this is not funny if you want to do a skit i mean if it is it culturally insensitive if they make me do a skit on something based on what we learn in medical school how we learn to do it and everybody there is white except for like a handful of us <laughs> it's like it's not that i'm an oppressor but there's so many cultural things that are not i want to say little things but foundational things, even as the United States of Americans, that some groups of people, I swear, will never get maybe 3, 2.7% of that population might get get it or at least acknowledge it. There's so many things that goes over people's head. And if you're one of those people wondering what I'm talking about, I appreciate you wondering. That's the step in the right direction. I am not a saint. I am not perfect. I don't know what it's like. What what it's like to be white. I don't know what it's like to be like a Karen and get my way and whine and cry and bleach my hair and get my way even more. I don't know what it's like to be wealthy. I don't know what it's like to be paid a living wage at a job. So I, there's many things that over my head. I don't know what it's like to go in a store and not being followed around and ignored when you actually want to buy something and um, you can look throw a map on the floor of this neighborhood and throw up like a quarter and have it land on a business and research the business look at reviews see if someone on the facebook groups oh i love that store because of a b and c and i got my grandmother such and such and they loved it and go try to buy that thing they always say oh they're so nice oh they're so sweet oh they gave me extra five percent off I had a cute puppy with me, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. like, you had a puppy and this and that and this. I was like, oh, and then I had to use a credit card because I'm butt broke, even though I look like I'm now. I go in there with $100 bills in my pocket and be like, I want to purchase this thing. Like, not like an attitude. Ma'am, no. No, you're not allowed to have a person here because people steal stuff. Oh, no, you're not allowed to. And you go back and read all of the reviews and all. We love this bank. We love this business. We, they're so nice. They're so sweet. So helpful. Like personal shopper. Blah blah blah. Like me, they're just like scoot on. You know? And I was like, what about these hundred dollar bills? I want to give my family. So. So you got to think about not judging a book by the cover. In some situations, people are just nasty. And you, they might fit a stereotype because of their skin color or the sound of their accent or something, unfortunately. But you're not judging just because you see, you open up your car door and see them. You end up being judgmental because of their actions or they're picking at people or they start cussing and um, howling at you. That is individual and that is a time and space right now period. Um, I'm going to do a meditation here for 15 minutes. Um, the guy I used to date texted me in the middle of the night and said that something, somebody got sober. Um, and what I get scared of is when I'm not really getting along with my partner, I'll get some kind of text, message, messenger, Facebook, 
friend request from some fellow and I feel like there's a spiritual plane that there's like a void like a motel vacancy or no vacancy and when we're getting along and spend time together it's like no vacancy leave me alone and it's just like the split second of disagreement and people bombard and I'm scared the same thing with him I got hundreds of pages that I got to go review and then get to work I'm gonna be gone until probably 9 tonight I'm gonna miss my meeting I missed it on Tuesday because me and my daughter my daughter um, invited me to one of her class assignments zoom call um, I don't know what it was but it was um, BIPOC people in a uh, counselors and everyone was called doctors so PhDs and masters professionals in uh, mental health counseling um, I just want to cry it was such a surprise and I want to thank my daughter for inviting me um, to this session and she wrote a thank you at the end to them and it was so professional and loving and compassionate and I said I am so broken how does my offspring just seem like such a blessing to the world and just like asking God or the universe to protect my both of the children are polite like that but just smart and cheerful and people have continued to remind me what a dark cloud is over me so it makes it easier to stay away from others and just I don't even know how to say anything because I, I just I feel like I need to meditate and then keep hearing this getting used to these heater slash air conditioners um, I always wanted to be kind and loving and compassionate and honest we did this exercise in my class about ethics and it reminded me of me asking to take them the, the um, the bark or bark leaves are I don't like to take leaves but um, tree branches and sticks to the dump to the compost instead of putting everything in the dumpster and we did a scenario um, that would involve someone having done something like that but it was they would benefit financially so it looked shady that I was trying to defend this but all I could think about in my mind was as a supervisor and keep it out of the landfill and take it to a recycling place whether it's plastic bottles aluminum cans and uh, we're not supposed to talk about the class uh, so I was sit saying my situation of uh, I've taken boxes uh, I told my boss that I get some certain kind of bottles or stuff I'll take it to the recycling um, right on the way to one of our headquarters and use that as I mean it's technically you're still on the job because you got that stuff from picking up trash on the ground I said oh I might take a five minute break and carry a couple of things um, like my drink a water bottle put it in my box drink a water bottle put it in my box use paper towels from the truck to you know, wipe the windows off when it's frosty they put it in like my boot so then I might only have three or four and I a couple of water bottles and public left laying around take those to the recycling as part of my like five minute break even though I'm still doing stuff for the job and there's a dump right about an eighth of a mile from one of the sites just take a wood they look in and chop oh put the lumber over on that side put that on that side they have one for scrap metal so in my mind it wasn't about the money they try to say ethically in my mind it's can you take it to one of those places where it potentially is going to be recycled or reused or composted and turn back into earth instead of in a landfill for the next million years 
and that's something I didn't state. <laughs> so the group might think I'm dishonest, but it, I kept saying, what if you asked your supervisor? And, but yeah, I wanted to emphasize the um, recycling aspect of it. Um, and I've spent my whole life telling, so I just told you, like, I want to take care of the earth, t take care of animals. Don't drive fast when you see a fox or a deer or a raccoon or a squirrel on the side of the road or a bird in the road. People speed up, run over birds. You've seen their necks break and blood start pouring out. We've seen it at our medical school. Me and my friend were talking and saw someone speed up to run into a bunch of um, pigeons and kill them, kill at least one of them in front of our eyes. I'll never forget that day. It was a small street with students walking back and forth across the street. Who in their right mind thinks that's okay? To just disregard a life. Like, that's a lot of people that end up killing people. What younger ages harmed animals. Um, so my mind is so, I always want to gather them up and rescue. We're going to eat the nice up. Pigeon. We're gonna eat the Colorado Humane Society or the county or the Audubon Society. Or something. We're gonna eat the nice. So we're gonna kill it. If it was a bald eagle, yeah. If it was a hawk, yeah. If it was a vulture or a crow, or this man, it's invasive. Blah blah blah. But it's a life, and I've had pets and birds, and they recognize their owners, and they love their cage mates, and they go out and they exercise, and they ring bells when they want stuff and like the wild ones have animal partners and children and communities and hierarchies like it's not up to me to destroy and take life if I can help it it's I shouldn't be able to put the lights out on anybody I attend births I like to bring in life my puppy that I got in eighth grade was a unwanted birth, I brought her in to my house and cared as much as I could. But I just have everyone tell me that I'm doing life wrong, that I don't know how to get a job, I don't know how to pay my bills, that I'm so poor, and that all of this stuff. And that I... Uh, all this noise makes it hard to sleep in. That I um I should have slept in. I'm so tired. And I had this dark cloud that I'm always negative and I don't think it's so positive. And now I've heard it so many times that I'm listening to my boyfriend. And I'm still hard-headed, don't tell me what to do kind of person. I'm listening to realize I knew about three years ago I was so, so optimistic. The racism and the hatred I got in my naturopathic med medical school in CNM, I became pessimistic, but my focus was to help as many people as I could by being a professional in the field of natural um, and integrative medicine, I and childbirthing and disparity of childbirthing and um, doing a very holistic, including natural and conventional medicine, including prescribing and having the DEA and taking insurance and all that stuff. Um, and I haven't been hardly able to help anybody and. When I do, I don't get paid, and I realized that the more, before in CNM, the racism, and I even lost a job because of some crooked people um, and lies and stuff. Before in CNM, I, um, I remember I the lab by myself, and I was drawing the blood, or students were drawing the blood, and then I was processing it and putting it together for the labs, and they kept canceling the they kept canceling the people to pick up the labs. And I was calling like, you guys haven't come yet. And somebody called and canceled. They called and canceled. I got like the whole 
box of blood samples. Like the patients get really mad when they come and put, pay for a lab, and nobody comes and picks it up. Same with rocks. We used to have all that stuff in the after hours drop box. So they'd come around closing time, and if you closed, they'd go out outside the building. You know, a little white lab boxes. Man, what a mess! Just doing my job, doing a good job. This guy owned a lab, this medical doctor, and he called me once about getting some lab results, and I didn't have them. And I said, I'm sorry, I'm the only one here. He's like, who's doing the blood job? Who's doing this? Who's doing that? I'm doing it all, and entering that stuff, and getting the samples ready, and doing the results, after I pull them off from the internet. <sighs> he came down there in person. I think he said he had an appointment with my supervisor. I was in there alone for hours. It was like that all the time. My coworkers, when the boss was gone, would go on these extended coffee breaks. And this one lady was Persian, and she had light eyes, like a jewel. And she had all these plastic surgeries, and beautiful hair, and beautiful body, and cute, skimpy little clothes. And, and they loved her. She was mean, made me feel little. And I'm already had no love for my family to tell you, you can do it, come on, you know, you are, you are, God loves you, you know. I didn't have anybody telling me that. So I just, during those years, I became pessimistic because I allowed others to lie about me and lie to me just like my family did. And it's a familiar situation, it's a comfortable situation, but... Because of my 12-step programs and that listening to other people, I had a little bit of, mm, you don't have to put up with that. Um, and so I feel like I get punished. And don't get me wrong, we've all been blessed in my family. Not God would. But I feel like when you don't have privilege, you miss out on a lot and you don't have opportunities. And privileged people say there's no scholarship for me. Well, there's scholarships for certain people because that's the only way. And you're going to say, well, if that's the only way, then you shouldn't be here because you don't deserve it. What, you don't deserve that your parents and grandparents were all medical doctors that worked at a big hospital that brought home $394,000 a year in 1981 and have trust funds for you? Like, well, I guess you're right then, you know, I guess, you know. We, we had been slaves, and we are the people, your family still lives on their mansions, not McMansions, but legit brick, whatever, estates in the South, where you have money from your slave cells and stocks and bonds that you're still earning more off the interest than I'll ever see in my lifetime. Because your ancestors had slaves. Picking cotton and they're making money buying us on trade, uh, selling slaves and trading the product that the slaves handled and planted. And maybe they bought the seeds or maybe they bought some a couple tools and threw up some shanties for the slaves. Like maybe, maybe they were already there. But maybe the slaves made them out of old pieces of wood they found in the woods, like fort, like little forts. But you may millions of dollars off our people. We finally decided after three years of emancipation approximation to let us free. You had a nest egg, you had a ton of money, and we we're kicked in the world with nothing. Some of you guys, some of our guys, sorry, bought their freedom. They had to pay for their own self. It'd be like if you were a prostitute, you had to pay for your own self. <laughs> like, that you're like, I'm still not free added tax like a indentured servant. Indentured servant would make a deal and get tricked. The blacks didn't make any deal. And people say, oh, the people in Africa sold them. You come over there to some crooked person, it's not the Africans, it's that individual. It's greed from his uh, slavery, or uh, imprisoned people. That greed and that white man's gold. Huh? That individual is not my hero. <laughs> that individual is not my relative. That individual got sucked into a lot of things that people sell out to their community. They're sellouts. Their greed sold them out. Um, 
and they were already probably doing something shady in the first place. Not saying that's okay, but these people, I know people today that still have land from the 1600s in their property with slave property, and they got money. They could pay for their kids' college, buy cars, buy horses for their kids. Live on the waterfront. Have vacation homes all over the country. Million dollar RVs. And those are the people look at me like, what's your problem? And the people that don't have all that stuff I listed, they still somehow got to go to school with their privilege and not be told. If that white kid stole, this happened to me more than once, that white kid stole my homework, erased my name, you can still see it. And I'm the one that had to get in trouble. Same thing happened to my son. My son has white skin. They did the same thing to him. Because they want to punish the blacks and let the whites get away with it. And they ta taught me that at a young age that it's not worth turning somebody in because I was told by the bank at Michigan State University that I was going to go to jail for stealing my own money. First you make us try to buy our freedom, then you tell me I stole my own money. You don't steal your own money, you keep it in your dang account, stupid. Like, like no one's going to go to jail for the rest of your life. I was on my way to school to be a doctor. No one's going to be stealing a penny of their own money try to report it as a law. Like, I didn't even know that was a thing. Just someone Latina lied to them if they believed her. Which I also see in the case that, that Latina um, would be believed over me. Colorism. The BIPOC population. Different race. The Latinos were not slaves. The Native Americans were not slaves. And I'm also part Irish. Indentured servant, freaking slave ancestors. And some Native American. So, annihilated. A survivor of all that crap. And people tell me I have a doubt or cloud, and all I can think about is loving others. And I try to talk to someone, introduce myself, smile. Legitimately. If I'm not in a mood, I'm not going to fake. Unless I need to. <laughs> like, like, you can turn your attitude around fast. Sometimes you're just... It's not, you're not being fake like I'm trying to get something out of this. Shake their hand. And be treating others the golden rule like I want to be treated or how I learned that other people are treated nice and loved by their community or treating you that way even if you're rude and people still tell me how horrible I'm doing but your kids are doing great or your brother is doing great your dad's doing great your uncle's doing great but you you're a problem I feel like they're gonna shackle me, tar and feather me for being, uh, like, hum humiliate me even more. My advice to you guys, give people a chance, but be cautious. Because someone like me might be an asset to your community, but you might judge me. You might make assumptions. None of the people that tell me about my bank account and being poor Neither of them have access to my bank account. None of them have access to anything financial. And I don't have access to theirs, so I can't compare and tell them they're right. Any of the people that judge me because of my financial status, I might be making more per hour than them. Their living expenses, because of who they are, veteran status, marriage, two, pe two married people working, blue eyes, everyone in the family has blue eyes, cute blonde hair, kids coming to the bank, oh, is this your family, oh, you want to buy a house, yes, no problem, who cares, you only earn $3 an hour, who cares, $249,000 house, yes, here we go, no problem, better, and here you go, nothing down, congratulations, sir, we just closed that deal in three hours, like, what, like, <laughs> you don't know that person's paying $700 a month for their house, and judging you because you're paying 2500 for uh, zero to one bedroom. They don't realize they're privileged. And someone should sit down with somebody. Be honest. With, have another honest person sit down and look at your finances, your income per hour, your education level, and find out what privilege really means by comparing how hard that other person worked 
about that group the other days and other things that, oh, you may have heard that you have to work 10 times harder to be equal. So as a person, a black person has to work 10 times harder than a white person to be um, equal or like just under equal. I don't even think you're ever equal. And I was hoping she was going to say, oh, don't listen to your ancestors telling you that. They're like, nope. They're like, yep. And there was other people uh, of different races on that call. But <laughs> I was like, I was hoping like, ding, 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 the glass ceiling. 